Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo. This week, an anonymous White House administration official wrote an op-ed to the New York Times alleging an internal resistance to Trump's White House. Ouch. In other news... Feeling alone is never fun. When a student finds themselves within the demographic minority of the classroom, this feeling can become a daily occurrence. We sat down with teachers and students to get some insight on how one might be affected by being a minority in the classroom setting. Yeah, I mean, it's something kind of unspoken, but when there's people around you who, at least for me, maybe it's kind of a challenge because mm -hmm. they've grown up together, uh, I think it can make it harder to work in group presentations and things like that. You know, sometimes I hear from my teachers, for example, oh, you speak uh, English well, and then there's always that qualification uh, for an Asian. If, like, teachers could, like, just ask me where I'm coming from, it would, like, make me feel comfortable and just not, like, assume that I've been here for, like, my whole life and just, like, expect me to know things. Especially in, like, my English classes, it's, like, pretty hard for me to, like, write an essay or, like, write a paper or, like, something like that, because, like, I don't know, I started using English real well in like 2016 when I first got to the high school. If I had any advice for people in my shoes, I would just say that, you know, uh, no matter what you face, whether it's uh, jokes or whatever, um, you know, there still are good people here. I mean, most people aren't like that. And I would just say, be confident, um, you know, don't doubt yourself and just go with who you are. I would just say, like, just don't pay attention to, like, bad jokes or, like, racist stuff. Or, like, just, like, focus on what you want to do. Just keep moving forward. Keep, like, a positive, like, attitude, positive vibes, you know, and just keep grinding, you know. There have been a couple instances where I feel like I haven't been heard. Um, oftentimes, it's in smaller groups where there's no teacher kind of guiding the conversation. Um, oftentimes, maybe one of me or one of my female classmates would um, like give an idea or make a suggestion, and it kind of just kind of get like pushed aside or not really thought about. And then perhaps if a more confident, louder male classmate made the same suggestion, um, they'd definitely handle it as if it was like valid. I also believe mansplaining is a huge <laughs> thing that happens everywhere, especially mm -hmm. in classrooms, maybe even especially in STEM classrooms is if you come up with a, you know, a number or an idea, it might be shot down a lot easier if you are a girl by men because they, I, know, I don't think they're doing it consciously. I mm -hmm. think it's their subconscious being like, oh, because they're a girl or because you know, I'm more powerful and smarter than them, this isn't, they're not right. I think that the way that we're going to fix this problem is just getting loud and powerful women in STEM. Um, if you have an idea, speak up. And if you know that you're right, don't let a man tell you you're not. Um, mm -hmm. So many times girls have had an answer that they're confident with and then the minute a guy is like, oh no, maybe it's this, they'll change their minds and that is just, like I've seen that so many times. I myself have done that so many times. Just like stick with it. Like if you think you're right, then you probably are. Yeah, I would say the most important thing for younger girls is just confidence. Like I wish in the past I would have had the guts to speak up for my opinions and I feel like I'm starting to do that because if, you know, if you have, you have a gut feeling, you're probably right. I'm Amelia Tamayo. Thanks for watching and a big birthday shout out to Mr. Harp. Bye.